Hey folks, we are here at the Build Conference. My name is Dan Fernandez, and our topic is DevOps and Team Services with the esteemed, <laughs> amazing keynote, Donovan Brown. So Thank Donovan, you so much. Why, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and, and tell people what do you do at Microsoft? Uh, my name is Donovan Brown. I am a senior DevOps program manager here at Microsoft. So I'm responsible for the DevOps vision that we have on Team Foundation Server and on Visual Studio Team Services. Okay, so uh, for folks who didn't see the keynote, definitely check it out. Give us kind of a recap. What are, what are some of the big things that we announced in the keynote? And you gave a, a talk as well that people uh, I did. can see as well. Yep. Kind of what are the big things that were, were announced in the DevOps and Team Services space at Build? Well, one of the big things is obviously the Xamarin, right? Xamarin, so, boom. Yeah, Xamarin was huge, not only from the development perspective, but also from the test perspective, because we have an extension that allows you to actually use the testing framework that we showed as part of your continuous integration build. So every time you build your code, you're actually able to upload that code to the test cloud and run it on physical devices. This is something that's really difficult to do if you don't have a technology like the test cloud. And if for folks who don't know what test cloud is, what's, what's the quick recap uh, of what Xamarin Test Cloud is or what it does? Xamarin Test Cloud is a service that provides access to thousands of physical devices. So what it okay. allows you to do is take the code that you've just built using VSTS and upload the actual code so that it gets installed on physical devices. And then what you're able to do is then run automated tests against those devices. Just right. imagine, as a developer, I might carry a Windows phone, I might have an iPhone on my desk, but there's so many different types of phones and so many different types of resolutions. Right. How am I supposed to test on all of those? Well, the test cloud gives you the ability to test on all of those different form factors and make sure your app works there correctly. So the way you would kind of recommend folks is, OK, I got my app. I, am I doing this as part of the CI process? Back to that, like, my app is ready to go, continuous integration, now let's go run my test? Absolutely. Every, we want to treat mobile like we would treat any other piece of code. Okay. If you were writing a Windows service, you would run your unit test as part of your CI build to make sure that you have a high quality I piece only, of code. I only test in production, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of been the meme uh, here. So. Bad, bad Dan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, so we want to run tests as often as we can and uh, as early in the process as we can. So we want to run them against our mobile devices, just like we were running them against our code if they were running a class library or something like that. And these are UI tests. This they is are. not like... Uh, 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 you know, a unit test where I'm, you know, making sure that the string this is replace a, works. Exactly. This is a full UI, full integration test, right? This right. is where we're actually using the application like we normally would on the phone, literally clicking the buttons and interacting with the forms just like a human being would. All right. Yeah. So, uh, which is another thing. So, how do you actually record those things? And is that the output of that recording programmable? Right. Like a good oh, idea good is question. like. Geez, I got four apps. They all do the same Facebook login. And I, I want to have that core recorded. Uh, 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 like you start thinking about almost factoring your tests. Sure, sure. Possible? So, yeah, so, so what ends up happening is they have a product called, or we have a product now. <laughs> yeah. Because the Xamarin is now us. So, <laughs> so we now have a product called the Xamarin Test Recorder. Right. And the recorder is a really cool piece of technology that does it generate code? Yes. But I don't have to write code to actually generate automated tests. I just use the application like I normally would. Kind of uh, for folks familiar with uh, Web Test Recorder, it's, it's kind very of similar. Very okay. similar. So what you do is you just basically either connect an emulator or you can actually connect a physical device to okay. your computer via USB and then start using your application. And this process, this application is monitoring all the actions that you take and is right. generating C sharp code for you. So okay, you can so actually, it is, everything is code, so that exactly. way if you really want to do the whole refactoring and everything Exactly, else. and also you can take that code and check it into your version control and then use it as part of your continuous integration build. Okay, so, uh, and I think one of the other parts is now, now you've got your app, you know it's, it's working, if you will. Right. And actually, probably one of the coolest features that I remember from the keynote was the playback and recording part. Do you want to quickly talk about that? Because that seemed like really interesting where like if you have some issue, you can actually see the video Absolutely. of something crashing as Absolutely. Well. So after the test cloud gets your binary and runs your test, it understands what actions it took. And right. what you can do is you can click on any action of your test and see all the, the devices that you tested against and what screen they were on at that particular time. So okay. those are just images. But you also get a full recording so that you can actually see the individual typing in or the, the automation typing in the characters, pressing the buttons, and what screens came up. Because sometimes you need to see that interaction to be able to diagnose what actually happened. So okay. they give you both, right? We give you the pictures, and we actually give you a video, and we give you detailed logs for the test, detailed logs for the device. 
the ability to diagnose what went wrong is just unparalleled with what we're offering. Yeah, so um, think, when I think about some of the logs, I think about things like application insights as well. Right. Where like, hey, maybe I'm recording the, the information because I want to see how the application is performing as well. How do those things kind of integrate? Like, would I do, uh, do I have like a separate uh, test key for AI and I'm kind of recording the information? Or, or what's kind of the way to set that stuff up? Well, for mobile, we're kind of moving towards hockey app as our way to autom to basically monitor those applications. So okay. if you're looking for crash analytics of an app that's in flight, that's actually on a person's device, if you want user analytics session data, that's all now coming through Hockey App, which was another acquisition that we made recently. Okay, so so sorry, what are the key things Hockey App does again? Just, just Hockey App will allow you to get uh, crash analytics. Okay. It also helps you distribute your application to your actual users, right? Because that's the part where I normally know think of Hockey App as the, the app distribution model. Absolutely, that's what it did first and did, does very well and continues to do for us today but it also does crash analytics it also does user metrics so it'll tell you how many users are using your app how many new users you're getting per day it even tells you how many sessions per day you're having so just because I downloaded it doesn't mean I'm using it but right. when we actually track the sessions we can actually tell you how many people are using your app every day as well that would be a sad number for my apps yeah, yeah <laughs> I know right uh, I feel the same way I think I'm the only person who's downloaded and uses my app so <laughs> it's pretty bad yeah there was a very interesting statistic actually in some stores, they had a list of downloads by application, and there was this really long tail at the end that had zero downloads, meaning the creator of the app didn't download his own didn't app. Didn't download their <laughs> own app. So, uh, so if you get at least one, you're you're above the long tail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Which, so uh, now when I think about how do I plug? Okay, so I've gone through the CI, my test run. Tell me about the Hockey Act integration into Team Services itself. Like, how do I set that stuff up? Perfect. So both the Xamarin inclusion and the Hockey App come through what we call an extension. Okay. An extension is a way for anyone to package up functionality that they would like to add to Visual Studio Team Services. And Hockey App and Xamarin have both done that. So what we would get when you install the Hockey App extension is a task. And this task can be placed in our build or in our release. And that right. task is the one that actually says, ah, I see you have a binary for me. And you want me to upload this binary to Hockey App. And then once we do that, our release system is pretty much done. It says, okay, I've taken the binary, I've given it over to Hockey App, and now Hockey App springs into life and says, okay, I'm gonna notify all of our testers who are running this application that there's a new version. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll show them the release notes for that particular version, and then the user will be able to then download that version. And these are testers generally, right? This isn't the way you distribute your app to your end users, it's the way you right. distribute your app to your testers. And then when these testers start using it, they can even give us feedback. So maybe the app didn't crash, but I don't like the way that that function works, or I don't like the way that that image is being shown. Right. I can send that feedback directly back to the product team. Okay, and so when I think about Hockey App, I thought, it, it, tell me if this is wrong, one of the things it allows you to do is do like pre-release. Like I would almost say like canary testing for mobile apps, like maybe that's not a great way to say, but right. basically some way to, to distribute pre-release versions to end users. Does, that, does that exist? Or? If, if they register themselves as a tester, then yes, they would be able to, you just need the Hockey App app on your phone, okay. and then you need to be registered to a team in Hockey App, and if that team decides to give you the bits, then you'll be able to get those bits there as well. And you can actually have different rings of testers. I might have alpha testers, which might be a dozen guys. I might have beta testers that are 200 guys. Sure. And what we can do using that task in release management is first distribute it to the alpha testers. Oh, that's and awesome. And then if I get an approval through release management, I will then turn around and distribute it to our beta testers as well. That okay. gives you a much bigger group of people that are using your application. And the key for distribution is install the Hockey app, and that's where you get that. your Right. App. Once you have the Hockey app app installed, then you'll be able to see all of the teams that you're a member of, all the apps that they're actually monitoring, and actually what versions they are, and be able to even restore back to a previous version. If you've updated to the latest one and it's really not really good, you could actually revert back to an older one. That's all done through the Hockey app for you. Awesome. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, tons of cool stuff on the on the mobile side. Mobile DevOps is, was, was huge, right? And we've been making huge strides with, again, as I said in the keynote, with the addition of Hockey app and Xamarin into the family at Microsoft, Man, the sky is the limit when it comes to mobile DevOps. I don't right. know anyone who's going to be able to do a, a better job at mobile DevOps than we are now. Yeah, I, and I really think we have sort of the end-to-end -end continuous story we in do. terms of testing tools and, and distribution. I, and I agreed. And, and, and now the development, right? So Xamarin yes. brings us to development, and then we, we also have partners that are, are huge in helping us with the mobile DevOps as well. So Let's talk about some of the partners. Well, one of the partners is Perfecto Mobile. Uh, they're okay. an amazing partner that really helps us when it comes to testing. So um, there's certain things that we, we do well in Xamarin, there's certain things that they do well as well. 
as a project manager, my main goal is that our customer be successful. Right. And depending on what you're doing, one of them might be a better fit. But I love the fact that we have partners like LaunchDarkly, we have partners like Redgate, we have partners like Perfecto Mobile, who keep adding this amazing amount of, of productivity and value to VSTS3 extension. So if you want to do mobile testing, you can go Xamarin or you can go Perfecto Mobile, whatever one fits best. Yeah, and I think that's uh, another really interesting point. The whole Team services isn't a set of features we do. It's now a platform. It is. Where it's a, really you know, good point. a ton of our partners can now plug in in ways they couldn't. And you know, I mentioned GitHub as Absolutely. one of the, the partners where people are like, wait, I thought you guys were competitors for GitHub. It's like, no, it, there's a great integration story where you can have your code in GitHub, and let's say it's mobile code, and use our CI pipeline. I mean, it's just a fantastic story. It, it is. That it, people it, don't know about, because I, exactly. I actually, you, you're the one who told me about it. And I was like, really? That's awesome. Why is nobody saying this? He's like, you're like, I am. <laughs> exactly, the same thing with Jenkins, right? I have an yeah. entire series of blog posts on donovanbrown.com about how to use Jenkins with all the other greatness that is Team Foundation Server. Right. How you can use Subversion for your version control. Like, It's, it's a different world for Microsoft. I, I made a joke on stage yesterday that the first time I installed Linux was after I joined Microsoft, <laughs> right? I was thinking, think about that, right? There was a time where that would just simply not be allowed. Right. And now we integrate with Jenkins, we have stuff with Subversion, we have the ability for you to use a Mac for your development, visual code runs everywhere. It's just such a new age and a new time and it's so exciting to be at Microsoft where we're playing nice with everyone. I right? know. Any language, any platform. I wake up with that mantra every day. How do I go enable DevOps for any language on any platform? You know, one of the big things that, that's coming out and really kind of transforming how people do web development is Docker. Oh, yeah, Everybody's sure. saying, you know, uh, it's like the word that's stapled on. It's like, oh, yeah, we have a, a database. No, we have a Dockerized database. <laughs> we have a Docker, Docker image of a container that's running it, exactly. Yeah, it Dockerized everything. And, and, you know, what's funny is even the SQL Server team, when they released their SQL Server on Linux, they did it in a Docker container. Awesome. Which was, you know, just kind of crazy for us to think about. And uh, uh, so some of the cool things that you and I had been working on Absolutely. back in the day was uh, ways that if you want to use Docker, having extensions that allow you to do that. So why don't you give kind of like a recap, because you know a lot of people don't even know this capability exists. Right, I mean, you actually introduced me to Docker, right? I watched your Channel 9 series, and then I came and found you and said, remember I said, give me yes. a brain dump on what yes. Docker is, because I want to go do this demo where we actually use VSTS and Docker together to do a right. full DevOps pipeline. Well, there was a lot of friction when you and I first started doing oh, that, yeah. right? The volume of PowerShell that we needed, the tools weren't really where they needed to be. Um, and what's really beautiful about VSTS is I didn't have to wait for someone else to go fix this problem. Right. I took the knowledge that you gave me, I picked your brain on multiple occasions, yeah, yeah. and I went and I wrote my own extension for Docker. Uh, right. And then, so it has tasks to allow you to run them, it has tasks for you to allow you to stop them, to be able to push them to Docker Hub. I mean, everything that I wanted to do in my DevOps pipeline, there's now a task that lets you do that very, very easily. Right. And what ended up happening is I showed my manager and he's like, this is awesome, let's take this and put it in the box. So right, right. I know that that extension is now being demoed here at Build and is going to be made available to everyone so that they can all use that stuff to go to Docker. And I think the key part is, look, just build your ASP.NET app Take the app and leave you know the what? Docker this to us. thing, yeah. leave Docker to us. I want all the, the take my app, put it in a container, and here's my host, maybe it's on Azure, maybe it's on another cloud. Doesn't matter to us. We do not care. Exactly. Do, it could be on-prem. It does not matter to us, exactly. And, and uh, everything just works, even with Docker Compose. So you start thinking about like, okay, I'm not just running a single container. I'm I need to spin up several containers that integrate together, exactly. So Compose right. was the part that the team added right after I handed it off to them. So <laughs> it's complete now. It, it is ready for prime time, and I'm really excited to see that extension come out. Yeah, so, um, and this goes back to some of the extension, back to the extensibility. So right. the way you built this, because you actually did, for lack of a better word, the, the first prototypes on these tasks. For folks that are looking to even think about, maybe I, I could do this integration, what are, what are some of the ways to start? I know there's the VSO tasks project. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in GitHub, right? So mm -hmm. what's interesting is all the tasks that you see us producing inside of VSTS, they're all open source. Right. So you can actually go and read exactly how we wrote all of these tasks, and that's how I started. I found right. a task that was really close to what I wanted, I downloaded it from GitHub, and I just started changing it and uploaded it to my own private VSTS so that I could go back in and see uh, how it worked, and I learned more and more about it. Guys like Abel Wang and myself are blogging constantly on ways to extend it and different techniques on using it. I think Mads has a, an extension uh, talk here at Builds too, so there's a lot of guys out there who are trying to figure out ways to make it really, really easy. Uh, right. And it's just, it's an exciting place to be because you can literally make it do anything. I've, I've, I've joked that the sky is the limit, but it's no joke. 
there's nothing that Once I can't do. Once you have the do. hook for PowerShell. And you have Node.js, right? Yes. So that means it runs on Linux, it runs on Mac, and it runs on Windows. I almost write all of my tasks now in Node.js because I want them to run on all the platforms. And with Node.js, I can run PowerShell, I can run, uh, if I'm on a Windows machine, I can go and call a REST API, right. right? Which opens up the entire world for me. I've played with, um, different like key stores and like that, like the, um, what is it, the key vault in Azure. Right. I wanted to store secrets there and I was able to pull them down into my build using how, tasks that I wrote. How did that go? <laughs> it actually went really well and okay. I found out that I wasn't the only guy doing that, right? Okay. So I now tweet before I write, like, hey, has anyone played with this? Because I saw someone tweeted at me that, hey, Donovan, I just did this amazing key vault extension. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm glad I know because I can stop working on mine now and just oh, use yours. Great. Because even people who aren't organizations can share their extensions and you can download them and add them to your VSTS. So let's actually take a step back because Key Vault's kind of interesting for folks to kind of wrap their heads around where you had things like configuration or secrets, a connection string. Yeah. And, and what does Key Vault do and when, when do you kind of use it? Key Vault is a way for you to securely store your information so that it's not floating around in your source control, right? Right. Uh, if you can't lock down your source control, you could literally have really protected passwords just floating around where any developer on your team can actually go and do a get and then boom, I see the keys to the kingdom. Right. What we can do instead is actually store that in a strong box or, or, or key vault that is a one way in and it's hashed and there's no way you're getting that stuff out unless you have permission. So it's a really secure way to have sensitive data hosted for you outside of your CI system, yet accessible from your CI and CD system. And from the CD system, because a lot of the access is based on Active Directory, are sure. you building like a service account or how is that stuff? I use so service principles. Service principles. Yeah, yes. and we're going to make that a little easier to do in the future. Creating a service principle right now, being completely transparent, it's harder than it should be. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, several of us blog that <laughs> these are the steps you go to create a service principle, but that is the entity that you can then use to access your your um, your key vault and get their proper creds and things like that. Yeah, and. Uh, when you start thinking about like I'm going to have uh, uh, sort of the separation of things, do you see like folks building, hey, let's build uh, for dev, test, staging, prod, where they're building, you know, um, maybe it's Docker hosts and a, a copy of Key Vault here, like where they're almost having like the ARM template model where the, the whole infrastructure is kind of cloned between dev, stage, test, staging, Correct. Prod. In your key vault, you can actually have different containers in your key vault. So I don't know that I would stand up a key vault for dev, QA, and prod, because I can okay. also tag my secrets. So there's several different ways. I, mean, I don't know that there's a wrong way and a right way. Whenever I go and talk to customers, I first listen for a really long time to sure, figure out, okay, sure. how do we best use this technology to fix your problem? Because cookie cutter solutions don't really work very well. So I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look at a, a customer scenario right. and determine how many vaults we would have and containers and things like that. But yeah. you can model it any way you want, which is the beautiful <laughs> thing, right? There's, there's, no, there's no way that won't work. It's just which way works best for our, our particular customers and instance. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's probably some of the other interesting things. It's, you know, when you start thinking about how configuration changes and configuration sure. changes uh, over there. Um, uh, you know, the other interesting part where folks were asking for was, and to, to completely put you on the spot, uh, <laughs> Hosted build, right. where you know now that we are uh, Linux, Linux, and, and we love Linux company, here at Microsoft. Uh, hosted build support for Linux. Is there any it's update on, I know there? It, not, not an update. We're we're still obviously trying to figure out ways to make that work. We okay. host Linux as happily in Azure as we do Windows, and there's a lot of Linux workloads. Uh, we just have to figure out the best way for us to be able to stand those up and maintain those. Uh, it's a lot of work to maintain a hosted agent for you, right? The, the keeping everything up to date and making sure that it's ready and available for you. So there's ways that we're we're investing to figure out how we're going to solve that for you, but it is on our roadmap. Okay, yeah, and I think the the other part is the whole um, for folks who do need that and want full control of their builds that I didn't even know this capability existed, where you can have your build Private controllers. Agent can be on-prem. Yeah, they're called private agents, and you get one of them with every account. So what you can do is you can choose whatever platform you want, Windows, PC, or Mac, and you can basically install the agent on that machine and register it with your VSTS. And there, you have full control. You can install whatever tools you want, enable whatever capabilities that right. you need, and then all of a sudden, every time you queue up a build, it rushes down and builds it on your agent even if it's behind your firewall in your network, which is a really powerful concept because now I can deploy using VSTS to on-prem assets, which a lot which of people don't huge. even realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Realize it's, you can it's one that. of those things where team services isn't all about cloud. It's, it's not, and I think it's positioned that way, and a lot of people are under the misconception that if I move everything to VSTS, I must be targeting Azure only, but just because your code and your build and your releases in VSTS, you can target any 
platform anywhere. And even if you're trying to use AWS or, or someone else's cloud, there's no reason you can't get there using BSTS or Visual oh. Studio Team Services. So, Donovan, this has been awesome. Thank Love you. It. Where, where should people go for more information? Uh, obviously, you can go to visualstudio.com. Um, and Twitter plug? Oh, yeah. I'm at Donovan Brown, and I tweet all about this stuff all the time. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Donovan. My pleasure, this has been Dan. great. All right. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks, folks.